Good morning. Welcome to St. Mark's Church on this cold and sunny Easter Sunday. Uh, I'm Pastor Adam Thomas, and today we are celebrating our 10th Easter together in this special place on Pearl Street. During the season of Lent, I preached a four-part sermon series on the verse John 3.16, which culminated in a new interpretation of the most famous verse in the Bible. I just want to read that interpretation to you for just a moment here. It says, For God so loved the entirety of creation that God revealed God's own self in the gift of God's only child to draw us deeper into relationship with God, to find our place in God's story of reconciliation, and to embrace the true life of God's presence now and forever. I'd like to spend today's sermon offering a bit of a coda to the sermon series and speak again about God drawing us into deeper relationship. This makes sense to do on Easter Sunday because today is the day we celebrate God's full and eternal embrace of creation through the power of the resurrection of Jesus. Let's start by zooming in on the encounter we just heard in the gospel reading. What always strikes me about the scene is the movement from Mary's desolation when she weeps at the empty tomb to her utter elation when she recognizes the resurrected Christ. John paints the scene with a special tenderness he reserves for only the most intimate of moments between Jesus and his followers. John gives us a sliver of Mary Magdalene's story, her move from desolation to elation when she realizes that Jesus is still with her as he promised he always would be. And the pivotal moment of this story is Jesus calling her by name. Names are rare in the gospel according to John. I went back and counted, and in the entire 21 chapters of the gospel, Jesus calls, well, let's just see, how many people do you think he calls by name? Less than five, more than three. <laughs> I had a Monty Python sketch, sketch in my head now. <laughs> Jesus calls exactly four people by name. There's Simon Peter, first among the disciples. There's Lazarus, whom Jesus brought back to life. There's Philip, who had been with Jesus from the beginning. And then there's Mary, who heads to the tomb before dawn on the first day of the week. In each of the special moments when Jesus calls these four people by name, he is somehow affirming or strengthening his relationship with them. I'm just going to walk through all four of those for a couple minutes. The first thing Jesus does when he meets Simon is give him the nickname Peter, which means rock, which is a pretty cool nickname. We invest all kinds of theological motivation in this name, because of Peter being the rock on which the church is built. But if they were any two people besides Jesus and Peter, we would see the nicknaming as a sign that their relationship is moving into the territory of good friendship. My best friend in college, Jeremy, and I took to calling each other just by our first initials, A and J, and then we started a radio show together that no one ever listened to, <laughs> which was probably a good thing. Um, and uh, our radio show personas were Van Hoos and Steel. Van Hoos and Steel. We got those names off the back of a hearse <laughs> that we saw one day driving somewhere. And Nearly 20 years later, we still call each other Van Hoos and Steel. <laughs> I'm Steel. Nicknaming signals the deepening of relationship. At the end of the gospel, Jesus says Peter's name three times. And this 
naming reasserts the relationship that Peter had denied three times during Jesus' trial. In the end, their relationship is repaired because Jesus calls Peter by name. The gospel describes Lazarus as one whom Jesus loves. When Lazarus dies, Jesus is days away. And Lazarus' sisters make that faithful accusation that if Jesus had been there, Lazarus wouldn't have died at all. So Jesus goes to the tomb and shouts out, Lazarus, come out. Or as my friend Sam Rodman likes to translate it, Lazarus, here, now. (laughs) Notice that Jesus doesn't say, Lazarus, I raise you from the dead. Rather, he says, come out. Jesus calls Lazarus by name, but does not give Lazarus the option of remaining in the tomb. The naming is joined to Jesus' command to return to his family and his friendship with Jesus. Thirdly, Jesus calls Philip by name. That's one of the disciples. Philip by name. After Philip asks him, says, Lord, show us the Father. That will be enough for us. Jesus replies, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been with you all this time, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus calls Philip by name in the midst of wondering how Philip could possibly not know him yet after being with him from the beginning. With this, Jesus calls Philip into deeper, more committed relationship with him. And then there's Mary Magdalene, who is weeping at the empty tomb. She is desolate, thinking that her Lord's body had been stolen and possibly desecrated by the people who put him to death. With tears and the fog of despair clouding her vision, she sees the gardener who asks her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Could this gardener be in collusion with the body snatchers, she wonders? And she accuses him of being in on the plot. But then he says that all-important word, Mary. She turns and the desolation vanishes in an instant of delight. And new elation, new hope, new life surges in to fill the void. Teacher, she shouts. And I imagine her jumping into his arms. And then Jesus gives her a task. To be the first to proclaim his resurrection. The question is, why does Jesus saying her name change the story? Why is this the pivotal word? Well, as with Peter, Lazarus, and Philip, saying Mary's name proves Jesus' relationship with Mary. Her name is the outward sign of her inward identity. In this way, names are sacramental, windows into our natures as God's beloved children. Know a name and you know something of the person. Who among us didn't feel elation when we found out our high school crush did, in fact, know our names? Saying Mary's name is Jesus' shorthand for saying that he has returned just as he promised and that life would never be the same again because their relationship would never end. Earlier in the gospel, Jesus foreshadowed this when he said, the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Whenever he has gathered all his sheep, he goes before them and they follow him because they know his voice. Later in the same passage, Jesus talks about the command from his father that he give up his life in order to take it up again. Thus, Jesus links the power of the resurrection with the power of naming, which is really shorthand for the power of relationship. This is the good news of the resurrection. Christ rose from the dead to show us that nothing, not even death, has the power to keep him from remaining in relationship with us. Christ knows each of our names. 
They are written in the book of life. They are written on his heart, just as his name is written on ours. As Jesus called Peter, Lazarus, Philip, and Mary into deeper relationship by saying their names, he calls to each of us. He calls to each of us, speaking our names, and thus ourselves, into being. These names of ours are special things. They carry within them the promise of eternal relationship with God in Christ through the power of the resurrection. So the next time you find yourself in a moment of silence, a moment of peace at the center of the maelstrom of busyness, just be still. Be still and listen. Be still and listen for the resurrected Christ calling you by name.